the character of human beings are unpredictable sometimes they love each other sometimes they go any extreme to kill each other or to show their hatred this class we are going to experience such a thing that was happened in the life of jewish people holocaust concentration camps tortures painful incidents mental and physical abuse The World War II genocide of the European Jews between the year 1941 and 1945 across German occupied Europe Nazi Germany and its collaborators systematically murdered some 6 million Jews Hitler had long planned an invasion of Poland a nation to which Great Britain and France had guaranteed military support if it were attacked by Germany on September 1 1939 Hitler invaded Poland from the west two days later France and Britain declared war on Germany that was the beginning of world war second my dear students today we are going to deal with the lesson address this address was written by Marga Mingo her real name is Sara Mingo she was born to a no orthodox jewish family and we see that during the year 2020 on march she turned 100 okay and also in the war we see that during the world war second minko's parents her brother sister all were deported but having escaped arrest herself she spent the rest of the war in hiding and was the family's only survivor as we go through the lesson we see that marga minko she is a victim of world war second maybe throughout the lesson address she is giving her personal experience after the world war second highlighting the attitude of non jewish people towards the jewish people once they came out from the world war the story is about the unpleasant situation of a jewish girl who faces when she comes back to her house after the war during the second world war she lost her family and her house in the story she comes back with an address given by her mother to take her possessions back Let's see how the story goes on. One day after the war, as I told you, this protagonist was the victim of World War II. With the address that was given by her mother, she comes to a home. And after a long time, she is back to her homeland, Holland. And we see that once she came to the address, she made bell on the calling, and the door was half opened. With the protagonist just introduced herself as the daughter of Mrs. Yes but the lady who opened the door was acting as if she can't recognize the girl and she says that i don't remember once again the protagonist just introduces herself telling that i am the daughter of Mrs. Yes i came here with the address given by my mother then immediately we see that the lady just half open the door she is trying to hide herself inside and she was not letting the protagonist get inside the house and now as the girl who was standing outside she thought that she might have wrongly gave the calling bell or the address made me wrong as she was about to move from the place she happened to see the cardigan of the lady who was wearing and she easily identified as the cardigan of her mother's now she was understood or now she really learned that the address was correct and that cardigan once the lady was wearing belongs to her mother once now she was sure that the address is correct and we see that the lady who opened the lady who opened the door is mrs darling mrs darling says that she doesn't have time to talk with the protagonist as if some guest is there inside the house she immediately closes the door and before leaving that house once again the protagonist just checked the address which was given by her mother she had seen it was written on the white enamel plate on the post the side of the door as darling door number 46 and she was pretty sure that the address is correct and she came to the right house now she is moving back to the railway station once the lady ignored her On her way back to the railway station she started recollecting the memories with her mother at her home before the war and she thinks that how and when she first had seen Mrs Darling in front of their house 
and it was in the first half of the war that this darling was considered to be one of the acquaintance of the narrator's or the protagonist's mother after a long time they met each other and they from that time onwards this mrs darling started visiting the home of this protagonist and one day she had seen that this darling was carrying a lot of things from their house and the protagonist questioningly looked at her mother and the mother just signaled her not to ask anything or not to insult the lady who was carrying the things from their house and the mother said that definitely we need to go away from our house as the war was going on so definitely we will get lost of all the things and mrs darling was very kind enough to keep all the possessions that we have so that's why after each visit she carries a lot of things from our house and also we see that the narrator and her family being jewish they need to go for hiding if the situation is getting more worse so all these things were remembered by the protagonist as she is going back to the railway station and she is seated inside the tree and another thing that she remembers is that one day she was about to ask her mother is there any reason for giving all the things that belongs to them to mrs darling but her mother wanted to keep all the precious things safe so she thought that once they are back from the hiding once the situation of germany holland is stable enough we can come back from hiding and we can collect all our possessions back from mrs darling's house that was the explanation given by the mother of the protagonist for giving away all the precious valuable things to mrs darling and we see that the narrator she is trying to recollect the face of mrs darling also in the tree okay and she also remembers the time when her mother gave her the address and at that day the particular day when her mother gave the address of mrs darling mrs darling was wearing a brown coat and a shapeless hat and that day also she was carrying a lot of things which was looking like a great burden for mrs darling to walk with the heavy bags and suitcase you know here we see that once again the mother told her to remember the address she told just remember the address darling door number 46 in marconi street so sitting inside the train the protagonist remembers all these things and she came here to collect her things but the lady was not ready to accept the narrator and here we see that this narrator after uh, a great incident a great time she once again thought about the things that she wanted to see she thought that all the things which belong to them gives a lot of memories because each and every tiny particle of their belongings might have her story to say even the plates even the candlesticks even the paintings everything and they are all now kept in the house of mrs darling so after the liberation as we have seen in the introduction the protagonist is the only person who survived the war all other members of her family killed got killed in the concentration camp on the holocaust she is the only member of her family who survived the war so now she wished to keep some of the things that was used by her mother by her family so for the second time here we see that she also wanted to see the things back she thought that let me go let me touch let me bring back the memories of my life the memories of my mother the things that we used once we were happily leading a life in holland at present we see that this protagonist was leading a very pathetic life after the war she somehow managed to live in a small rented house and the first time of the liberation she was very frightened or afraid to come back to holland fearing of the scenario she took some time and now when 
she was leading a perfect happy life all alone in a small rented house she thought of coming once again to see the things which was given in the house of mrs darley and here we see that she makes a second visit the first visit mrs darling purposely ignored the protagonist so second time with the great intention of seeing her things touching her things just to experience the warmth of the possessions that mrs darling is having from their house she thought of visiting again to the house or to the address which was given by her mother mrs darling room number 46 in mercon street and the second time when she reached the house the door was opened by a girl of 15 and she said her mother had gone somewhere and will be back soon but the protagonist agreed to wait for mrs darling and by the time we see that the small girl just invited her protagonist to come in and also on the way through the passage to have a seat inside the house first of all the protagonist visualizes the beautiful hanuka candlestick which belongs to the family of the protagonist and that gave a great happiness in the mind of the protagonist and immediately she remembers that yes this candlestick was very rarely used by as because it was unmanageable maybe it's too large so because of the problem of handling they have very rarely used this candlesticks now it was very safely kept in the passage of mrs darling's house okay as she moved inside the house one after the other the protagonist started identifying the things she started looking very curiously all over the house because almost in all corners of the house was filled with the things which was given by the mother the mother of the protagonist mrs yes and everywhere whenever she looked wherever she looked it seems to be like the things are familiar but it was kept in an unfamiliar place she was much disturbed and felt uncomfortable she believed that each and everything has its own place and when it was kept all around without any taste or in a tasteless manner spoiling the serenity of the things she felt so disappointed she even scared to look at the things as she was seated beside a table once again she happened to experience the warmth of her family when she touched the tablecloth the tablecloth used by mrs darling was also belongs to them before the war before it was taken away by mrs darling the very same tablecloth was now spread in the table of mrs darling's house she immediately remembers yes i know this tablecloth there is one bone mark slowly and steadily she started moving her fingers along the lines by the time the girl the daughter of mrs darling came with a cup of coffee and here also we see that this girl was so soft cornered than mrs darling here we see that when she came with a cup of tea and she started pouring the tea from the teapot and that teapot also is familiar to the protagonist that also evoked a lot of memories in her mind because the very same thing was used by her mother once now it is here in the family of mrs darling she started asking about the beauty of the teapot yeah oh how wonderful to see the teapot and immediately the girl said yes we have a lot more about the antique things like this the spoons the plates all the things that we are using we have got a very good collection of antique cutleries the girl was so excited to show all these things to the protagonist even the pet pepper plate that was kept on the table which is used to keep fruits on the dining table and here we see that the protagonist once when she was a very young girl she liked the pepper plate now it is seen in the home of mrs darling and the all these things evoked nostalgic memory she felt the relation of things which were once 
theirs. But here, as she is realizing the value, once again she experiences uncomfortable because the things, the beautiful things, the valuable things of them now arranged in this room in a tasteless manner. And she remembers that once her mother just asked her to clean all the spoons and forks in the house. And that is the day she realized that they ate in silver spoons and silver forks. And here we see that the narrator, after seeing the undisturbed manner in which the things are kept in the house, she doesn't want to take it back because the relation, the value the family had given to the things, the possessions has lost by keeping them in an unproductive manner. She thinks that it's not safe to be here once again because slowly and steadily she was unable to withstand with any more emotional stress in the family of Mrs. Darling. She was not ready to see and wait for Mrs. Darling. All of a sudden, she got up from the place, telling the daughter, the girl of 15, that I need to catch my train. She immediately left the place. By the time, the girl was about to show her all the things which was considered to be antique and special. On her way back, to the railway station, once again, she heard the jingling sound of the spoons, which were theirs before the war. And on her way back to railway station, she thought that it's good to forget the address than to collect all the things which were spoiled by the arrangement in a tasteless manner in an unfamiliar place. And she thinks that it's easy for me to forget the address. Mrs. Darling, room number 46, Marconi Street, than to take back all the things from their house because the things has lost the value as well as the relation they had with the possessions or the things in which it was secretly or safely kept in the house of Mrs. Darling. In another situation is that now she is living in a small rented house. There is no enough space to keep all the paintings, antique things, cutleries which was there in the house of Mrs. Darling, which was kept in the custody of Mrs. Darling or taken away Mrs. Darling, taken away by Mrs. Darling before the war. And she feels so uncomfortable and she had no desire to possess her mother's belongings back. And she determined to forget the thought of ever getting those things back. She remembers that the memories are greater enough, the memories are more enough for her to keep the relation, the love that she has for her family, for her mother, rather than keeping all the things which was now in a useless manner kept in the house of Mrs. Dolly. So this is a story of the address by Margot Mingo. She is just giving out her experience after the liberation of the victims of World War II. The address by Margot Mingo.